Hello and welcome to ProTrader Strategies Market Commentary for Wednesday, January the 24th. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies that you can implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolios, and therefore what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. And please remember the past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, having all that out of the way, let's get it on. Crude oil up on the market, as we would expect. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. But we got some flash PMI numbers coming out across the pond. Now, remember, our ISM PMI numbers, which is Institute of Supply Management, ISM, and then the PMI is Purchasing Managers Index, is our main number. Flash uh, Manufacturing or Flash Services PMI, Purchasing Managers Index, Across the pond is their uh, biggest number. Ours, our ISM comes out a little bit beforehand, so this number isn't quite as strong. It's more of a lagger than what our ISM is being the uh, leading indicator. All right, so um, what else was I going to talk about with PMI? Anything above 50, Purchasing Managers Index, is expansion in the economy. Anything below 50 is contraction in the economy on this uh, particular index. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's get on with it. Across the pond in Europe, we got the French flash PMI for manufacturing came in at 58.1, slightly lower than uh, 58.7 that was expected. Again, above 50, still expansion, but lower than what was expected. Not really good. And they revised last month's number down just slightly uh, by about a uh, percentage point. And then on to the French flash services PMI, which came in at 59.3. Expected to be 58.7. And one other caveat with this Purchasing Managers Index, it is a survey of purchasing managers in their uh, industry. And they are talking about, they're asking basically about the robustness in the overall economy. So, um, you know, it, it's kind of a little bit uh, bias in a sense to their uh, what they're looking at. But it is a leading indicator of economic health in a sense because, uh, it really tells you what the conditions of the market, uh, market uh, the conditions of the overall economy are, based on what these purchasing managers are seeing. You know, if they're seeing a lot of demand, then they see that the economy is doing well and they need to ramp up production. So it's kind of like that idea, but it's a survey of about 400, 500 uh, purchasing managers, um, and talking about their conditions, like new orders, suppliers, deliveries, inventories, things of that nature. All right, so uh, then on with the German flash manufacturing PMI came in at 61.2, lower than the expected 63.2. And then the flash services PMI for the German region came in at 57.0, expected to be 55.6. Flash manufacturing for the European region, other than French and German, basically, came in at 59.6, expected to be 60.4. And services PMI came in at 57.6, expected to be 56.3. Are you getting a uh, little bit of feel going on here? What we're seeing here is manufacturing doing a little bit worse than the services aspect. Uh, You know, a global economy really can't start churning unless we have that manufacturing pickup. We're starting to see a little bit of pullback in that. It is still above 50 well, and pretty solidly above 50. So there is quite a bit of expansion going on. But when we're expecting better numbers and we're getting less than uh, stellar numbers there, that's going to cause a bit of a red flag going forward, I would have to say. And then we got um, German Average earnings index came in at 2.5%, expected to be 2.5%. Moving over here to the United States, uh, we did get our flash PMI numbers, but I'm just going to sideline those. We've already talked about our ISM, but we did get existing home sales came in at 5.57 million units, expected to be 5.72 million units. So, you know, 15,000 units less than expected and they revised last month's number down by uh, 3,000 give or take so uh, existing home sales not doing too great as interest rates start rise 
Uh, when interest rates start to rise, the prices of the houses go down, even though you're paying the same amount, right? Because interest rate, the interest, the difference on those housing prices is going to the bank. Um, so that is also, we're still in this bit of a housing issue, increasing interest rates. There's a lot of adjustable rate mortgages out there based on the Fed funds. And when those rates start going up, then people's getting, uh, people having those mortgages are getting adjusted up. So, you know, the money is going to the banks in a sense, but, you know, that also is going to put a little bit of a damper on the overall velocity of money. We don't want all the money going to one place because when people spend in different ways, that's what really creates a, a good, robust economy. All right. Let's talk about crude oil futures since that's the last thing we talked about or are going to talk about. Crude oil futures came in at a drawdown of 1.1 million barrels, expected to be a drawdown of 1 million barrels. Now, this is the DOE, Department of Energy. Now, there's also the uh, EIA, which comes out with a number usually the night before. That number came out quite a lot higher than expected. It actually showed a build of about 3 million barrels, I believe it was. And um, that being said, that EIA number is not the one to really look at, you guys, because that number is voluntary to give out what they believe that number is. So the problem with that is that um, if, if it's voluntary, some of these refiners and, and things of that nature may kind of put out an inventory a little bit higher than what's expected, uh, maybe to short it. I don't know. Uh, but the bottom line is don't trade off the EIA number. Wait for the DOE the next day because it is the number that is re uh, these um, uh, the EIA, like I said, is voluntary. The DOE is mandatory. They have to give exact numbers to the Department of Energy. It is a law. So um, that is the number to look at as far as I'm concerned. I don't even look at the EIA until after I see the DOE and uh, things of that nature. But anyway, the EIA showed a build of over 3 million barrels yesterday and it was actually a drawdown. So a pretty big move to the upside uh, on... Um, the drawdown that we saw after yesterday's slough off around the EIA. So we did go up and check that, test that high. We got up into the 65 handle. I've been talking about that. But I think a lot of people are starting to look at this and start really digging into these numbers. I've talked about this many times. We're seeing this over and over again on the crude oil numbers. And with those crude oil numbers, what we're seeing is a build. You know, we have record production. We have not been producing this much oil ever in the United States. Uh, that being said, with that ramp up in production, we are seeing a drawdown in crude oil inventories, but we're just moving it from one bucket to another. As the refiners uh, break down this product, make it uh, into distillates, gasoline, heating oil, things of that nature, those numbers are starting to rise. We were expected to see a drawdown on distillates. We still saw another build. We're seeing a build, another build in gasoline. So all of these numbers are showing uh, that we're just basically refining it and moving it into a new bucket, which doesn't necessarily mean that there is a major drawdown in crude oil. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these crude oil numbers that it isn't necessarily exactly what you're looking at. We're seeing productions ramp up. We're seeing uh, we're seeing the refiners ramp up and have all that together. We're seeing distillates go up. We're seeing gasoline go up. So uh, gasoline, for instance, rose by uh, inventories rose by 3.1 million barrels, expected to be a rise of 2.2 million barrels. Distillates rose by 640,000. Uh, expected to be a drawdown of 1.1 million. All right, so we're seeing a lot of these um, markets continue to build, or a lot of these buckets continue to fill, despite the fact that we're seeing the drawdown in uh, crude oil. So I'm getting a little long in the tooth there, but I think it's really important for the global or the macro economies. All right, so enough about crude oil. Let's go to gold. Gold moving higher today by about $16, really blasting off, looking to test the 52-week high in here, which is really kind of surprising to me. Um, you know, one thing with the 
crude oil, we're seeing a lot of put buying. That was the last thing I wanted to talk about with crude oil is that there's a lot of put buying going on with these highs that we're seeing, whereas when we were on the lows, there was a lot of call buying. But back to, sorry, jumping around, back to gold. Gold really bucking this trend. It is a safe haven, generally speaking, when there's fear in the market. And we're seeing this market really rally, despite the fact that the equities continue to move higher. Uh, people are talking about the euphoria in the equities and stuff like that. The valuations uh, are a little crazy. But at the end of the day, we're still seeing pretty good economic data, uh, albeit it is coming in slightly lower than expected. But it is still good economic data nonetheless. Uh, now we got... Bitcoin futures in negative territory. They were just up like $75 a minute ago. And uh, when I first started, now we're uh, in negative territory just slightly. But, you know, what's $100 amongst friends in Bitcoin? That's really just an unchanged market at that point. All right, bonds coming off quite a bit, almost down a full uh, point. You know, I talked about this wanting to go down and test the 145. I think that's still on the books. I think the market's going to continue to roll over here. We're still seeing decent economic data, not... Uh, as good as we would expect. But with that being said, it is still, um, you know, a pretty good moving economy. So I think that the Fed is going to continue to look to raise rates in 2018. All right. Uh, on to the equities. The uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average up almost 70 points. This check candle looks like it's in negative territory because we opened a little bit higher than we are currently. But one thing to note when we look at these dojis that are kind of uh, back to back like this, that's not a very good um, representation there. But that could very well be a continuing pattern uh, on to the bullish side. So it's not really stopping out. We would need to see another candle like this maybe below here to make it start looking like it was kind of topping out. That We're going to have to wait to see how these candles end up at the end of the day. Uh, NASDAQ has a similar situation here where this could look like a top here, but depending on where we kind of settle out, uh, it could also be a continuing pattern. So on these tops, I'm going to be looking for confirmation to the downside before I start taking advantage of any downside move. And again, with the E-mini S&Ps, this could have looked like a top yesterday, but today's blast off on the open uh, really kind of negated that. So uh, right now, looks to me like it could very well be a continuing pattern, but we'll have to see what happens later on in the day. This is the overnight session right here, basically. And as you can see, coming into the day session, we did blast off and touch the all-time historical high, so that is a solid number. Ever since then, though, overnight inventory is long. It's been long for a while and uh, not been like uh, tested. Today, we're getting that happening where we are uh, right off the open, made that new high, and have since started covering to the downside. So E-mini S&P is in negative territory. Um, on to a few things that I've done. Texas Instruments is a trade that I put on for the earnings. If you're following me on Twitter, I said, hey, I'm selling some puts in uh, Texas Instruments. If we look at the daily chart on this, like they beat earnings every single time and stay pretty tight to where they are uh, trading the day before. So I thought that this would be a good opportunity to play to the upside. Of course, they got smashed on earnings, missed by about 80 cents. Overall market just tanked overnight. Uh, immediately, I was very nervous about this because in Texas Instruments, I had it, I had sold the uh, January 114 puts in there. So obviously, you can see those 114 puts are uh, are not looking very good right here. Uh, the 114 puts I sold for 42 cents in there. When it came back up and started rallying, I just was I actually was out a little bit early when I saw this Doji. I got out right after that. I probably could get a, could have gotten out a little bit better than I did, but I like to get out within that first 15 to 30 minutes. I felt like I was a little overextending myself. This, I, I, I was just really worried about the downside on this just because they got crushed on their earnings. Um, and United Airlines beat on earnings, and they got slammed also. So I was really worried about the negative tone in the market. So I thought, you know, just like a rising tide lifts off ships, this could tank it. So I got out uh, on this for a dollar, or I bought it back for a dollar and one cent. So I, I lost about 60 cents on that one there. Uh, thankfully got out before it really started falling off again. Uh, and then on to United Airlines. If I can pull up a United Airlines, I guess I don't have the United Airlines here. I punched it in, but it didn't give it to me. There we go. There's United Airlines. 
All right, so the United Airlines came out with better than expected earnings. They rallied up, but guess what happened right here? This was their earnings call. And, you know, a lot of times <laughs> great earnings uh, can be trashed by a lack of knowing what you're saying uh, or how to say it, I guess. But in the earnings call, they basically came out and said they're going to start matching prices for, with other airlines. So that's kind of creating this whole thing about, oh, pricing wars with Airlines, basically every airline stock is down today. We're seeing uh, uh, Unite, our American Airlines come off as well, which I'll talk about here in a second. But with that coming off, uh, I got saved because I sold some calls in here. I talked about this yesterday in the uh, daily market commentary for the uh, United Airlines. I went in there and sold some calls. I sold the January 82 calls in there and I collected 40 47 cents in there and bought them back for two cents. So 45 cent winner there. So um, still a bit of a loser on the earnings today, uh, but very happy with how everything kind of uh, panned out in that, especially with earnings and them talking about increasing seat size. Now there's, there's a lot of things going on here. One of the things that UAL increased on was their cargo. And another thing they talked about was their passenger seat size increasing. So they're going to kind of lose a couple of seats here and there for those passengers, but I'm trying to put my head around it. I wonder if they're increasing the seat size to um, draw in more people. They're actually adding more uh, flights to different places, but in order to allow for more room for cargo. So the cargo may very well be a higher margin product uh, for United Airlines, and that's why they're kind of increasing seat size that would decrease the amount of luggage going in there, therefore allowing for an increase in cargo space. That's just a theory right here that I came up with this morning when I started re digging into all the numbers and everything. I don't know. Uh, but uh, market not really liking that. And this is what I was talking about when United Airlines uh, earnings call came on. This is what happened to American Airlines. Now, if you guys remember in American Airlines, I'm long some puts that I, I got into on the 10th of January and they have done nothing but uh, gone straight up. Let's we look for the 10th of January here. This is where I got into United Airlines, bought some puts thinking we were going to kind of roll over, got a little overextended above the uh, value area high and whoop, off to the races to the upside, but earnings call for United Airlines has brought it back down. So I'm looking to get out of this for a scratch. I'm actually getting pretty close on this uh, trade here. I'm working it for a 70 seven cent offer. I got into these puts, uh, which are the February 50 puts in there that I bought for like 75 cents. They're trading right around 61, 62 ish. So I'm trying to get out for a scratch on that. I, they have earnings coming out. So I want to be out of that trade before that, because like we talked about, when volatility increases, those premiums increase. I don't want to ride this out for when I can get out for a scratch to see those premiums decrease and it just stays the same. I'd lose money. So I'm going to get, try and get out of this sometime today. Uh, I know I've been going a little long on these daily market commentaries the last couple of days. So sorry about that. Earnings I'm going to be looking at later today is Las Vegas Sands, LVS. I'm going to stay away from Ford. They do have earnings, but I'm going to stay away from that. Discovery, D, uh, Discovery Credit Cards, which is DFS, uh, 3M, 3M, 3Ms, uh, Love, Southwest Airline, LUV, Caterpillar, uh, and I'm going to be out of American Airlines. I don't think I'm going to play the two airlines because I've kind of gotten that. Now that they've all gotten this tank, if they start beating on earnings and actually don't say something stupid, they could really blast off to back to where they were. So um, if anything, if I decide to go in there and the premiums look like they're pretty juicy in there, I'd be selling puts. All right, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for sticking with me on this long uh, daily market commentary. If you have anything that you guys want me to look at, if there's charts that you guys want, want to see and me talk about, throw it out to us. Reach out to us at trading at protraderstrategies.com. Friday's webinar is going to be on the conversion. So it's a great way to protect an overall portfolio and or an individual stock. I'll show you how to set that up to increase your probabilities of, of success and do it for a credit. So you actually lower your basis, but you completely protect yourself to the downside. So check it out at protraderstrategies.com. And if you can't take that, Take it easy.